All right, everybody, welcome to the uh, March meeting, 2016, BCS, Bucks County Aquarium Society. A uh, few things to go over. Uh, we have the dates out for two, uh, 2016. Our, the big, big topic is um, the big auction, uh, May, May 14th. Uh, May 14th right here. Starts at noon. It's a Saturday. We auction off a lot of stuff. It's a lot of work. We need help. We have a sign-up sheet up here. So our, our, our auction date, if you haven't been here, we, we do the last, we, we usually do one, but I, I've, I've taken over the big auction the last two years. We're very successful with it. We fill this room with all kinds of people. We auction all kinds of stuff off. Tom has been working hard. He's been getting a lot of good stuff in. He got an acclimation system in. I think it was today he, he uh, posted it. This, um, we need help. We need help with running uh, items to, to, to the guests and taking payments. We also need help in the snack bar area. We also need a scribe that would uh, write down the items that are, are going to be auctioned. And we also need help in registration. So if you would like to help, we have a sign-up sheet up here. If you want to sign up, we would really appreciate it. If you do sign up, we will give you a t-shirt, an auction t-shirt for you to wear that day. And we'll feed you all day. You guys, a t-shirt. But I want to come up with something for the auction. So I want to kind of like have a contest of, of an auction slogan slash t-shirt contest. It would be something of a design on the back of a t-shirt. Something drawn, written, whatever you guys want. Something we can, we can hand in to a Celtic. And uh, uh, the prize would be $30 cash and a free t-shirt especially if you're not going to make it to the auction. Anybody can come in and participate. Uh, we have some artists like uh, Will. I know Will's really good at art. He, I'm sure he's going to jump in on that. So it could be anything. And the only thing we're going to have on the front would be the BCS. And on the back would be your, your, your design. And uh, if you guys want to pick the color of the t-shirt and the print, we can do that too, uh, the winner. Uh, all entries have to be submitted by uh, next meeting, and uh, we will have it. Uh, you can either bring it on a thumb drive, or you can email it to me or Tasha, and we'll put them all together, and we'll, we'll vote on it here, and I'll give you 30 bucks next month. July 9th is our picnic. It's at Play with e pa Play. Play Wiki Park. Uh, it's open to the public. I put 11 o'clock on the time. We usually start around 11, 12 o'clock. It's open to the public. So if you want to bring your friends and your family members, you're more than welcome. Uh, it doesn't, we don't ask for anything. If you feel obligated, you can bring a side dish. Uh, we usually have tons of food. It's a great time. Uh, Play Wiki is five minutes from here. Uh, Chamonix Creek runs right through there. We do collect with the kids. Uh, we get daughters and some small catfish and stuff. You're more than welcome to take them home and put them in your tanks. Uh, it, it, it's just a great day. So uh, July 9th for that. We also have a couple big time speakers coming in. Yep. We're working on Mark Duffel and um, Rusty Wessel. Rusty Wessel's confirmed. Rusty Wessel bought a house out in Indiana, Kentucky, Kentucky somewhere out there, and, uh, and he converted it into a fish house. It has 8,000 gallons of tanks. It has automatic uh, water changes. You don't do nothing. It automatically changes out the water and stuff. And he's coming here. We had to do some bidding and, and, and some working. We put some money out, and he's coming here to speak to us with a couple other clubs. So we're very excited. Will, Will did a great job uh, working, out the, working out the kinks. Uh, thanks, Will. And we got Mark Duffel coming in. When's Mark coming in? October. October. Mark Duffel is like, he's, he's a loach expert. If you, if you know who Eric Bodrock is, Eric spoke here 
two years ago, when I first became the uh, president, he's a big catfish cor corridors uh, breeder. Um, he speaks very, he's a very nice guy. He speaks very highly of uh, Mark Duffel, and he speaks about uh, Mark Duffel being a loach guy. He's bred every loach that you can think of. Uh, he just wrote a book, and we, we chipped in with a bunch of uh, aquarium societies to bring them in from England, so it, it's a big deal. So we have two big speakers coming in that we put out for, for everybody. John Morris, John Morris, where's he? Oh, there he is. He's, he's the guy standing on the chair. Damn, didn't even see you there, man, John. John used to be our vice president back in the early 2000s. He came back out of nowhere. He's come back, and he's, he's helping out in a big way. He's been um, taking videos of us and putting them up on the website, so it's giving us our website contact. And he's doing a really good job. He, he asked to buy the coffee machine. The club bought the coffee machine, so now we have fresh coffee for, for meetings. So that's... Thank you, John, for that. So, yeah, tonight we have John Claremont. He, um, John brings all of them live foods in per month. He works at a water treatment plant. Um, he, he's a huge, he was a huge killie fish breeder. Was, was slowing down in the hobby. His, his older brother started getting back into the hobby. He draws him back in, and he's here, and he's back here. Here are the, some of the benefits of Daphnia. I, a lot of times, well, I, what I recommend is when I sell the Daphnia, or if you catch it out in the wild, it'll have what it just ate in its gut, like that. So it's kind of like you're gut loading it. I don't know if you've ever heard that term before. But um, so they're eating, that, that's a, like a vitamin pill right there, because that's all the nutrients from the, the uh, chlorophyll and whatnot and the cratinoids, I guess you'd call it, from uh, the. Uh, algae it just ate. Like you can see here, the natural colors, it's a lot of reds, yellows, and that's what it, that's the primary colors it promotes in the fish, reds, orange, and yellows. Uh, glassworms has, uh, now see, when I collect the Daphnia, you can't really leave it in that bag for more than a day. You're, you're going to lose them. They, they don't store very well. Where with the glassworms, I've had people, like when I used to sell a lot of the glassworms, <laughs> I'd have some, you know, Sometimes people come up to me and like, you know when you sold them glassworms last year or something like that? You know, they, I forgot them. They were in my refrigerator for like six months, you know, but they were still alive. Honestly, they, and that, I've heard those stories a few times where people just, for, I don't recommend you forgetting them in your refrigerator, but they will. They'll, they'll last forever. And they'll last concentrated like a jelly mass uh, and it's stored like that. Now they do pupate. They're a larvae of this thing called a uh, phantom... Uh, uh, midge larva, I mean, f yeah, phantom midge fly. Um, but anyway, uh, uh, so they will pupate and they will hatch and they'll be like this little fly flying around. It looks like a mosquito. So, all right, that's, the, that's one of the key advantages right here is they'll live in the tank uh, for, for uh, you know, weeks, so they're always available. It's real good because for fish that like to eat their own eggs, like killifish, they'll, they'll get in the habit of eating their own eggs. And, you know, you're... They lay a certain amount of eggs every day. Well, if they eat them, then they're not available to be harvested. So it's a little easier for them to, to find the uh, glassworms in the tank than, the, uh, than their eggs, you know, trying to root around in an in a artificial mop or something to find the eggs. Same deal with this. Uh, you can see sometimes, like, uh, if I feed a, a newly hatched brine shrimp, they'll, this, this line right here will be all orange because they can get, the uh, brine shrimp, they can catch it with their, uh, I don't know, the front claws or whatever. Um, and a lot of times when I collect it, this will be red right through here, be like a red line. So I guess they're eating some kind of red algae or something. It's kind of neat. So. That's about what it looked like last week. Uh, last Wednesday, I collected glassworms out of this pond. And I, that's about all I, I opened up, just that little area around there. In the summer, you know, starting maybe, uh, I don't know, somewhere around April, May, it, de it develops this small plant called wolfia <clears throat> that completely coats this whole top of this pond. And it's kind of a pain. You can't scoop it out. But when, you, when I collect the uh, glassworms, I can separate them. I, I kind of like this. So 
One time, God goes, how many of them did you lose? And I'm like, uh, I don't want to tell you. I've actually lost two of them. But I don't do it that way anymore. So I kind of did a little comparison here of uh, different midge larvae. So midge flies are sort of like mosquitoes. Uh, and um, just kind of you know, what, how, they, how they rank, I don't know. It, it is. It's a comparison. So as far as any, like fish, all fish seem to love mosquito larvae. You know, so it is like the favorite out of any of the midge larvae. I, I don't know why, maybe the way they, they wiggle or whatever. If you get a five-gallon bucket, you get a, a nylon stocking, you throw a bunch of grass in that nylon stocking, you knot it. Now you have your, your uh, uh, like for your infusion of uh, uh, microbiological growth or something, whatever you'd want to call it, you throw that in the bucket. <clears throat> you put a couple two by fours over and you put the lid back on with a rock on top of the lid. So now, no, it's not going to overflow the bucket. You just take the lid off, there'll be mosquito rafts in there, you know. And then you could either use a little spoon, I use like a little white uh, plastic spoon, scoop the mosquito uh, egg rafts off. There's at least a hundred, maybe a couple hundred eggs in each one of those. Or you can let them hatch and then just, you know, harvest them that way. Bloodworms are fantastic as far as color. I mean, they're just, that pigment is a hemoglobin that allows them to live in the, uh, the mud on the bottom of, you know, ponds, creeks, whatever. And, uh, but, you know, they, they just, they contribute a lot of, like, just like the Daphne do. The reason why the Daphne get red, by the way, is because uh, they develop a hemoglobin pigment because they swarm. And when they swarm, they reduce the oxygen level so low that, it, that they need to use that hemoglobin to survive. Actually, when I raise them, I hope they get to that point. I don't even aerate the, the container uh, because then that way they'll develop that hemoglobin. They'll contribute the color to the, to the fish. This is what the fly looks like. Of course, you know, mosquitoes, everybody knows a mosquito. These things are harmless. They don't even, I think they last maybe a day. This thing it hardly can fly at all. It looks like it has trouble flying. Like I said, the antennas are too big. A lot of other things you can collect. Um, I've, I, I don't know if I brought any in, but sometimes I'll get coca pods. Serio Daphne are a lot like Daphne. Of course, it looks just like a Daphne. The, the way I know the difference of those is, and the reason why I tilt this picture is because they do, they swim sideways, uh, where Daphne kind of go up and down. Serio Daphne swim sideways. I, occasionally, I'll bring some of that in. Uh, a lot of times, Serio Daphne are like, are, are like totally green. And you know, I guess maybe because of the eggs or something. I don't know. Uh, then I, sometimes I, I, I can get these Grammaris pretty much all the time as well. Grammaris are great because they'll eat hair algae. So if you have, ever have hair algae, they'll take care of the hair algae for you. If, you know, if it grows in the, the tank, if you have too much light or something, uh, you won't have any problem with that. The you know, problem with them is They'll eat plants sometimes. They'll get at the root of the plant, or the base of the plant. They can eat, eat the plants as well. All right, these uh, water tigers are really tricky because they just look like a little twig in the bucket. I always have like a white container I can look into. And, but they'll, I've had them almost the size of my finger at the end of the season. That's how big they get. Dragonflies are real tricky too. They look like a little, little teeny piece of leaf floating down in the bucket, you know, kind of thing when you collect them. And uh, they, they'll just be like nothing that you, that'll jump out at you or anything. So you have to be careful about when, when you uh, have one of them. These are pretty easy to see, these diving beetles. Something that they won't eat is on the next page, uh, this giant water bug. And uh, I, I run across these a lot in the glassworm pond. So, but I think all these are bad for fish, even the uh, water boatman. Back swimmer looks kind of like that. That might even be a back swimmer. I, 